Hi, this is Anne with Fiber Designs by Anne. I create art quilts, hand painted fiber, and mixed media art. Here are some of my quilts that have butted corners. On the small quilts, I'm able to keep the piece straight, square, and nicely framed with butted corners. On pieced quilts, where I'd like the pattern of the quilt design to come out into the binding, I'm able to do that as in these two examples the pattern comes out into the binding with butted corners I can get that placed exactly where I want it and keep the quilt nice and straight and flat so now here is how I make butted corner binding now the little landscape has the side bindings which were cut two inches and then pressed in half pinned to the sides and the next step is to take it to the sewing machine and stitch them on. The quilt is done with the binding on the side. It's all hand sewn on the back. And the next step is to measure the quilt from the left to the right side. And if it's a large quilt, I would measure in several places and average that. But on the small quilt, it's easy. Just go across. And from that to that measurement, I'm going to add two inches. And I will cut two binding strips for the top and the bottom. Now, to put the binding strip on, I'm going to line my quilt up. The edge is going to hit on a grid. Then I'm going to take the binding strip with the fold away from me and set it right on top and bring it to the next grid line. So this is where the cutting mat comes in. So I have this up at this grid line to this grid line and this to the next grid line. And I'm going to pin it. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Find the grid line, lay the binding over, and if it doesn't want to reach that, I'm going to pull just a little teeny bit to the next grid line because that's going to bring the quilt into square. And then I'm going to pin in the center and anywhere else so that it will stay secure while it's at while I'm sewing it at the machine. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Once again, line the quilt edge up to the grid line, put lay the binding on top to the next grid line and give it a pin. Line up the other side to grid line. Pull the binding out to the next grid line. Pin it, pin in the center, same steps. Then, once this is finished, I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine. When I take it to the sewing machine, rather than start out here and go across, I'm going to start right on the edge of the finished binding. Back stitch a little bit and stitch clear across to the other side, and again, stop at the edge of the finished binding rather than going all the way out. So I'll do that on this side and the other side, and we'll do that at the sewing machine, so meet you over there. When I start sewing, <clears throat> I turn the piece over and I sew from the back. That way I can tell right where I want to start and stop. Okay, so I'm going to start a little back stitch just off the edge of that finished binding. And here we go. Let's take the pins out so as not to break the needle. A little crooked there, but that's okay. And again, just off the edge, a little tack stitch. And I will do the same thing to the other side. So the binding is sewn on the top and the bottom, and the next step is to remove a half of an inch from this inch that was hanging over. About a half of an inch. It's not all that particular. But it's easier when doing this to have that one inch on the grid line rather than try and figure out where a half of an inch is. So that's why I removed the half of an inch after, 
it's all sewn on. And it doesn't have to be exactly a half of an inch, just close to a half of an inch. So the next step is to have the quilt, be sure the quilt is facing up. So the pretty front side is up. Have nice little scissors that are sharp and in the binding, it's like a little sleeve here, a little pocket. I'm going to reach in with my scissors, make sure you're inside and about a quarter inch away from this fold, I'm going to cut to approximately my stitch line that held the binding on. Then I'm going to wiggle my scissors in here, making sure I'm inside all the time, and I'm going to cut that away. I'm going to rotate the quilt, do the same thing to all four corners. Fold about a quarter inch from the fold, and cut down about the stitch line. Again, make sure you're inside. You don't want to cut the back side of that. That's the front, and that would not be a good thing, although I have done it in the past. So obviously what I'm doing is getting rid of some of the bulk. Making it a little easier to handle as well. Now I'm going to take the quilt and I, I sew from my right to my left, so I'm going to have to do it like this. So that makes me want to start right here. I'm also using a, a darker thread so that you can hopefully see it better. So I'm going to stick my needle in and I'm going to come, I have a single threaded needle. I'm going to stick it in so that it comes just above that stitch line. And I'm, what I'm doing is getting, sinking my, not sinking my knot, but setting my knot inside the seam line. Then I'm going to turn this over so that I can handle it. And I'm going to, going to push that fabric in. That's where I cut that little, little piece out and bring this up. You can kind of look at the front and see how it's looking. Not too bad. So if you have to, just pull it a little bit over a little bit tighter. It might loosen up as you're holding it. And I'm going to start by doing a single bite stitch. So I've, I've taken a bite into this binding, and I'm going to take another bite into the fold that's closest to me. And again, next to the other, the hole on the binding, I'm going to take another bite. And I'm just doing single bites because it's easier to handle. Once I get past the binding, I'll be able to do this in one, one step. So I'm taking a bite coming up. It's just the thickness of that binding really is, doesn't allow that. And taking a little bite of the fold. Now when you get where it comes just off the binding, and I, the objective is to get my binding to cover that stitch line, And when it comes off the binding here, it tends to want to, the needle tends to want to go clear to the front. So just be a little bit cautious at that point. And get a hold of that needle. So once I'm off and out of that area, it's pretty easy to do with one, one stitch. So I'm grabbing the back, quilt back, and biting into the fold. And I'm quilt back and biting into the fold using my left thumbnail because I'm right handed to hold that fold just over my stitching. And every once in a while you might want to turn it over and take a glance at the front of the quilt. Make sure you haven't come through. And if this is poking out you can use your needle just to push it in but it's really just fine. And then I will continue on the same manner biting the quilt back and biting off on the fold all the way to the other side and I'll show you how I finish off the other side. So I'm stitching along. When I get down to, I don't know, about an, in, about an inch away, I'm going to start to tuck this in, this other end, opposite end in. You have to fiddle with it a little bit sometimes. And we're going to just tuck all that in. And bring this. Let's continue on. It's okay if it's not perfectly, perfectly uh, tucked in yet because, like I, as I said before, we'll just 
tuck it in when we get down there with our little needle. So I may start single biting this again just to make sure I'm getting it over my stitch line because it starts the bulk starts to affect how the needle goes is going in there. So I think I will do that. I'll take a bite. That kind of helps me helps me from going to the front of the quilt or what would be the back right now. Back side. Just pull it up. Give it a little tuck in. Take a bite. Just tuck those ends in. Take a bite. And as I said before, the thread, you would use thread that would match your binding. And even if there are some stitches here that show, they are not going to show like this blue thread is. And you just take a bite. And catch that front. Oops. And then at the end, I'm going to come in not on the fold, not on the front, but just on the back. If you're on the fold, your thread might show on the front. So just take a bite. And then I rotate this just so I can handle it more easily. Go back in and just do a couple back stitches pretty much in the same, about where I was. Then I'm going to go down. Well, let me get my last bite here. Now I'm going to go down and I'm going to go into that binding and I'm going to go into the body of the quilt. Make sure you haven't come through on the front side. And pull it snug. Rotate it again and I'm going to tie a knot at the base of the quilt. Just on the top of that back. And I will take my needle in that hole, if I can see it, and just travel it, just to sink the knot. I'm traveling in between the back, oops, in between the back and the front, in the batting. Make sure I haven't gone to the front. Pull it, that needle, pop, that knot popped right down inside there. Then I will take my scissors. And pick them up and clip that close. Get a little scratch. Well, clip it a little closer than I clipped it. This other trick is to just slide your needle under and there goes the thread and it's gone. And we'll do that same procedure on the other side of the quilt. Looks good. This quilt as well as many of the small quilts I make I will donate to Alzheimer's Art Quilt Initiative as one of their priority Alzheimer's quilts. I hope you can visit their site. And that's my how-to for budded corner binding. Thanks for watching.